This is a 1972 BMW R75 slash 5 and as you can see the top end has been removed. The reason for that is that when the head nuts were being torqued one of them wouldn't hold 25 foot-pounds. That means that one of these cylinder head studs has stripped the thread in the case. So we removed the stud out of this hole which is the one that wouldn't hold the torque and we're going to repair that stripped thread with a kit that contains jigs, the tools, and the helicoil inserts we need to make that repair. This is everything that comes in the kit from Northwoods Beamer. It's a jig which contains a cylinder that fits into the hole the cylinder base slides into. And over that is a drilling template which guarantees that the hole that we drill to cut out the damaged threads and to tap a new helicoil are true straight and plumb. There's a couple of boring adapters. This one is for drilling out the uh, old threads. And then this one is for using the tap to tap the threads for the helicoil insert. They slide in to this hole, which is where we have the damaged thread. And then they just turn to lock down tight. So a very flexible jig. The other thing included are a couple of tubes which are used to push against the jig face using the existing cylinder stud nuts just to make sure that this stays flush and up against the engine case. And then the other things in the kit are a drill bit of the right size to drill out the old threads, a tap for tapping the new threads for the helicoil insert, the appropriate extra long helicoil insert, and a helicoil insertion tool. So this kit is available for rental, which makes it a very economical way to repair this damage. I start with the plug that fits into the bore in the engine case. And if you look, you'll see one edge here is a little white, a bigger diameter than the other. And it's this edge that slides into the engine block, the bigger diameter. Now one of the things I do to protect the connecting rod from falling onto the engine case and nicking it, which will give you oil leaks, is I wrap it up with a little bit of green garden wire so it won't bump into the block. So I'm going to remove that while I hang on to the connecting rod. And then I'm going to take the jig plug, slide it over the rod, and fit it into the case. And make sure it goes all the way back into the case. The next piece of the jig is the drilling portion, which is here. And there's two bushings, as I said earlier. This one is for the drill bit, and this one is for the tap. So I put the drill bit bushing on this side because that's the side I want to drill the hole. This is just used to help guide the jig onto the cylinder studs. Now one thing to remember is that these studs are drilled so the distances here versus here are different. So if you rotate the jig, it won't fit. You have to put the jig in the right orientation to match up with the distances between the uh, cylinder stud rods. And then you just slide it home over the plug in the cylinder bore until it's up tight against the engine case. There we go. Now the tubes go over the opposing cylinder studs 
and we use the big flat washers on the end and then the standard stud nuts just tighten down on that snug finger tight snug is good but that keeps everything square and where we want it in the block So when we're done and have everything tightened down, nothing's going to move around. It's all going to stay square in the block, tight, nothing going anywhere. The uh, drill bit that comes in the kit is an 11 30 seconds and there's a piece of tape I put on it at 58 millimeters, which is the drill depth I want because if I go too far, I'm going to run into part of the crankshaft and I don't want to drill into that. So I can use any drill, uh, elect, uh, battery pack shop drill works just fine. And I just drill until the edge of the tape comes up even with the edge of the bushing. And at that point when I'm done with the drilling, I take the jig back off to clean out any of the drill shavings that are going to be in the case and clean that all up. And then what I do is I pull this block back off the jig and I just take out the drill bushing and swap it with the tap bushing so that that goes like that and that goes like that and then I slide this right back on the way I had it before and again reattach my tubes to put pressure on that to make sure I keep it square and flush on the engine block So that's pretty straightforward. And again, when you tighten these, you don't need to put a wrench on them. They're just there to snug everything up. So you don't want to lean into it with a wrench. Just finger tights, perfectly acceptable for what we're doing here. This is the tap for cutting the threads for the helicoil. And uh, I put a little tape on it so I know about how far in I need to go with the tap. There's not a lot of clearance to turn a tap handle, a T-handle. So what I'm using is a 5 16 quarter inch drive socket which fits over the tap. And then I have an adapter to go to my 3 8 And then I can hook up my ratchet and I can cut this much easier. The other thing is while I'm cutting, I uh, put a fair amount of uh, axle grease into the hole so I can catch the chips and grease the threads so it's a much easier process of tapping. This is the special extra long helicoil insert and on one end there's a little tang that is there to help drive it and this is the helicoil driving tool and you'll see there's a slot. The tang slides into the slot just like that so that you can twist the helicoil into the threaded hole that we've just tapped. Now in this particular case, BMW recommends high strength Loctite be applied to the helicoil threads, and that's unusual. Normally we never use Loctite on helicoil threads, but in this application that's the recommendation. So I put several lines of the red Loctite on the helicoil, and then I screw it into the case like that and I found that if I press on the handle fairly hard it helps compress the threads and makes the helicoil go in a little easier. There's a caution in this place where right about here inside the block is an oil passage which brings oil into the hole that the cylinder stud rod goes in and that oil flows up the rod to lubricate the rocker assembly in the top end. So we don't want that hole to be blocked. Consequently, when we run the helicoil insert in, 
we want to make sure it goes deep enough that the beginning of the thread of the insert is past the oil passage. So if you look carefully when you're driving the helicoil, you will be able to see right looking up about in this direction, you'll be able to see the hole and you can gauge whether you've got the threads deep enough. One other thing to note when you look here is there will be a chamfered uh, area here that opens up the hole a little bit before the threads start in the block and that is an opening to allow the oil to flow around the rod. It's at the end of that chamfer that the threads will be cut when we cut them with the uh, helicoil threading tool. So it'll be pretty easy to see that the first thread of the helicoil is actually in the beginning thread in the block. And then what's needed is to let that Loctite dry for 24 hours so it gets to its full hardness before you go ahead and thread the rod back in.